Welcome back to Control the Chaos Mama, life and launch strategy for ADHD entrepreneurs, creative rebels, and the overwhelmed mom. Today, we are talking with Michelle Porterfield. She is a certified life coach and host of Set Free Sisterhood podcast. She helps women to get unstuck and to break free from self-sabotage in that cycle of drinking. She is going to help people create their unique recipe for fulfillment. And the, a lot of that is going to start with breaking free from alcohol. I'm really excited for you to talk to us about how to break free from alcohol, if we should take a break, and really just know these steps to build some self-awareness. Welcome to the show, Michelle. Thank you, Angel. I'm so excited to be here talking with you today. I'm so glad that you're here too. And I know that a lot of people can really benefit from your story. So let's start with that. Basically, like, why did you start, you know, this journey with coaching and helping people to break free from alcohol? Like, where did that all start? Yeah. So in a kind of a bullet point, it's just, it's just like anything else. I just started experimenting when I was younger and it was cool. You know, I thought I would try it occasionally in the teens. And then in the twenties, it was sort of the, the wine nights and the wine clubs and the glamorizing and went through seasons with having children, things like that, where it really wasn't an issue. And then later in life, I picked it back up and it just became a bigger deal than it needed to be in my life. And when I was in it, it was just kind of what I did. You know, it just, it was weekends and then it went into days and just became where I was still very, what I would call, you know, high functioning, you know, raising kids, cooking dinner, working out, going to work, all the things. But I just was just not happy. I was just feeling stuck and I just wasn't fulfilled and just came to a place where, when I tried to remove it on my own, I went, uh-oh, <laughs> this is way harder than I thought it would be. And so I spent a lot of time trying things and doing the detoxes and the 30-day challenges and the podcast and the books, and I call it zigging and zagging, and just finally came a place where I just took surrendered action and just said, hey, you know, and you know, my, my foundation is in the Lord and it starts there, but then that's when the action comes in. So just this past um, August the 8th was three years alcohol free for me, which was so awesome. And so that led me into learning about myself and, you know, really figuring out who is Michelle and what does she want? And then beginning to, to understand how to release stress and, you know, create the fulfillment for my life. And so that led me into coaching and podcasting. And now I get to help women do the same. So it's awesome. I love it. That's awesome. So I know that one thing you said was that you, it it started with you kind of like trying to stop for a certain time because you didn't really know. So if you had to pick just maybe three simple things that someone could do to help build some self-awareness around that, what do you think you would suggest? I think the biggest thing is understanding that if you're going to alcohol for many different reasons and many different emotions, just really asking yourself why, you know, why is it, how frequent has it been happening? Is it something that you think about on the regular? And, you know, and then do you even go a little further and go, well, I think, I think I'll stay home at night and have a few glasses of wine versus social commitments and things like that. And just being super aware of how important this thing is, because what I have found that is that women who just drink a glass every now and then, or go out with their husband on the weekend, or, you know, maybe they have a book club that they have a glass of wine. It's typically not an issue for them. It's, you know, it's just something that it's on occasion and it's fine. And a lot of those women I found, they're like, yeah, I do it. And I kind of like it, but it sort of gives me a headache. So it wouldn't be something I drink all the time. But if you're fine and it's just becoming um, even part of your decor, it might be time to to question it a little bit. Gotcha. And I know that you mentioned um, kind of that social situation part and like kind of almost it's implied that you want it. So it's probably you need to build some self-awareness like to know that you don't. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So it's like, is this actually really serving the goals that I have? Because I know you mentioned going to work out and doing all that. And so on some level, you are probably self-sabotaging those efforts too, I would think. What about self-sabotage? Because I feel like I've talked a little bit about how how to kind of know what the self-sabotaging behaviors are. So I'm sure that 
for many people, alcohol is one of those self-sabotaging behaviors, especially if they're trying to get healthy or lose weight or be productive or really a lot of things connect with their families or, you know, so many things. So whenever it comes to self-sabotage, maybe could you speak to that a little bit and how um, someone can kind of prevent that? Yeah, I think anything that can become a self-sabotage, it's just so wired in our unconscious mind. And that's typically what happens is that we we all have a thing that we sort of default go to when we're feeling a little bit stressed out, we're depleted, we're tired. And so where consciously we have really said, okay, you know, I really want to blank, whether it's work out so many times a week or drink so much water, or if it's business, business related or any health relation, or even getting to bed earlier and sleeping, there's this thing that happens in the subconscious that it's like, but wait a minute, that's, that's kind of off your routine. Like, don't you normally eat ice cream at nine or don't you normally like have your glass of wine, like when you're cooking dinner. And so if we're not super aware and that's going back to the awareness and then we'll talk a little about how to know that and how to scan your body but if you're not really present and aware then that's just it's kind of like your default that's just what's going to happen and it could be it could be wine it could be the food you know typically too we go into new things with the desire of this really conscious desire of wanting it and willpower basically we really don't have like a a deep commitment or a super like structure way of even the accountability of creating this goal and then you know five days in man you get tired and so you default what would you recommend for someone who is doing that so say that they are wanting to build some self-awareness so they're like you know what I am going to take a break and then they start to realize like maybe this is bigger issue than I thought so now what should I do or some, some maybe tips for redirecting or rewiring our brain? Cause I know you mentioned their brain and how that plays into it. Yeah. So a big part of it is really that self-awareness piece and like body scanning. It's really new to a lot of people. I know for me, it was new. I was like, what, you know, I even talk about, or hear a lot of the health coaches talk about the, the hunger scale. And I'm really using that too, like really like tapping into what's really going on in my body. And I feel like we've just lived, you know, especially where we are now in 2021, I feel like as women too, we've lived in this cycle of just constant doing and reaction mode that sometimes we are so much outside of our bodies. We don't even really know what's going on and how we're feeling. And we're just responding to some sort of stimulus, whether it's a positive, we're going towards pleasure or we're walking away from some kind of pain and discomfort. So the first step is just really like pausing, you know, I'm all about the deep breathing because, you know, we don't do enough of that either. And just really kind of really, I just pretend that there's just some sort of scanner, you know, going through my body and I'm looking for, okay, what's going on? Is there tension in my neck? You know, do I feel a lump in my throat? Am I feeling like nervousness in my, in my stomach? Like typically those are the places or is my head tight? You know, especially if you're like a big time, like overthinker and you have a lot more of the anxiety brain and it's really tapping into like so where's this showing up and what's it trying to tell me what name can I give it typically it is like I'm just I'm frustrated I'm lonely I'm tired I'm weary I'm you know I'm sad and none of these things are quote unquote good or bad they're just emotions but typically when we're not taught which we're not to really process them then we go to something to get to feel something else or to numb it. You're like, I don't like it. It's not feeling good. So uh, it's kind of scary in the beginning. It can be, but really tapping in to go, okay, wait a minute. Why is this, why is this happening to me? Every time I come home from work and I see the, I see my kitchen, this lump comes in my throat, you know? Well, cause I'm angry because I feel like no one is helping me around the house, you know? you know, they're not hearing me. No one's hearing my voice. And it can be like, wow, I didn't realize that just this stimulus of seeing this. And instead of like understanding, well, okay, well, what do I need to do instead? Normally I drink, normally I go get some ice cream or cookies or um, just say, forget it and kick my feet up and veg out on Netflix. 
we could say, okay, what really will make me feel good in this moment to just help me work through this? It could just be movement in the body. It could be going and taking a hot shower, you know, touching, connecting with your children or your husband. There's all kinds of things in the action step, but so much of it comes from knowing what the heck's going on. Yeah, there is this, um, cause I definitely thought of the word buffer, which I know we've talked about in the past where it's like, you are figuring out, which that's emotional regulation for sure. Like figuring out what in the world that you're buffering so that you can work through it, not around it, not zigzag it. And, and I think that when you said go jump in the hot shower or something, that's a really good tactical, like change your environment or swap it. If the kitchen or something, when you walk in from work is the trigger, then maybe immediately go to the gym or go to for a walk or, you know, I, I heard this story once on social media and it talked about this man. And I believe, I don't remember the whole story, but he basically had a really bad day at work and, um, and he touched the tree before he went in. Have you ever heard this? And have you heard it ever? It's mm-hmm. on Facebook. So you probably did, but, yeah, <laughs> but I he was, touch- that. Yeah. yeah, he was touching the tree before he goes in. So it's almost like he was letting his giving his worries or like resetting before he goes in. But I feel like that is almost like choosing that when I come in, I'm not going to be like all laden down and like, like depressed and sad. like, cause I think that they're either rewarding themselves or like, I deserve this or they're coming to an environment that maybe they do like, Oh, she didn't clean or whatever, or like the kids are screaming or whatever. Yeah. And, um, and so trying to buffer it. So I definitely think all those things that you said are really good. And I think that buffer or not buffering, but body scanning for sure could help in a lot of different things. Like you said, Mm -hmm. Um, well, and that's, that's just kind of the first step too. Cause I feel like, you know, in the beginning we have to reroute, you know, that kind of work, you know, I think about that, like even from the GPS perspective of like, okay, this, there's something going on here. This is not safe. So we're going to reroute. So that's cool in the beginning, but you can't constantly do that either. It's not helpful. So that's a great beginning for anything that you're feeling that way. And then there's just the next thing of like, okay, well, what can I do instead? And the tree thing even made me think of, there's um, something I learned a long time ago and I've heard a lot of, um, it actually, a lot of men have done this, especially coming from, you know, home from, intense situations or transitioning in their home. And maybe it's the same thing for women too. If there's just something that happens between the transition um, from home to work and vice versa of where you just can do the deep breathing and then just even say the word release. Sometimes that helps just kind of repetitively saying, just release, release and give yourself a few minutes. You maybe even have like a um, I call them truth affirmations. Cause I like to take everything, you know, from scripture because I believe it to be the truth. And so I turn it into like a, a, an affirmation to where, you know, I can say that or some sort of mantra so that you can even create that transition too. And it could even be between, let's just talk, let's get real between parents and like getting the kids down and the crazy, like household, you know, or household craziness and then kids to bed and baths to like, there's got to be a transition from that to spending time with your spouse. If that's your goal, you can't just roll right into that and expect to be calm and, you know, want to connect with your husband. Yeah. Do you think that maybe people, cause you mentioned, um, especially women, how we do, 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 and we don't really always slow down to just be, do you think that maybe sometimes we sit down to like, have the coffee. Cause you do hear about like, everyone loves coffee. Everyone loves wine. Like that's all in the decor. Do you think that is like that whole idea that you get permission to sit and have this thing? If you are having, holding the glass of wine, like, you know, I'm having my coffee or I'm having my wine or I'm instead of giving your permission to do it anyway, you don't actually have to hold a glass. Do you think that that's part of it? Like that reward or. Yeah. Cause I wonder oh, for sure. And all that goes together. Cause that's, yeah, because it's kinesthetic, right? So you, you're you holding it, you're touching it. You know, there's all this like embodied movement and connection along with the trigger of the emotion. So for me in the beginning, it was like, okay, well, what else can I just put in that glass? I just put sparkling water or had hot tea in the winter. And so that it was kind of like a, you know, a little, little trickery, 
but it works. Um, and there again, it just depends on where the level of how much, you know, your listener is, is go into that. So there's all kinds of little ways. And it may be something where like just the conversation around awareness are like, Oh my goodness. Yeah. I have kind of done that more often. I'm very curious what this might look like in my world next week. And they'll just give it a try. Great. What would you suggest for someone who is, so maybe they've built up the self-awareness. They realize, okay, I need to maybe take this away or take a break or limit it or, you know, cause that's probably the start. And then um, they start to notice that this is sabotaging their goals and where they want to go. It's not fueling them up. And so I want to take it away. What else would you, would you have any other tips for how they could maybe break free and, or get that breakthrough from the other side to where it's not just, I'm going to limit or I'm going to take a break, but to actually stop. Well, it always starts, you know, with making a new choice every day. That's definitely the thing, you know, when you decide, okay, I'm going to give this a go. The really how the, the steps of a breakthrough, they kind of fall into three categories. The first one is if there is irritation, that's a good thing. (laughs) Typically we're like, okay, if this feels yucky, you know, the whole, I say good, bad in quotations, because that's, it's just a judgment, you know, it could be really good for you to feel really crummy right now. Right. Um, Cause it's telling you something you're learning um, or someone's like, oh, this is so hard or you're doubting or discomfort. Sometimes we think that that is the red flag to do, to not do the thing. But I want to suggest that's actually a really good sign to go ahead and do the thing because there's some resistance there for a reason because that means your unconscious mind is like, hold up, what's going on here? I might care doing my thing, running on autopilot and you trying to change it up on me and I don't like it, but that's okay because that's where we actually make change. The second one is a really clear declaration and there is an I will statement or an I will not. And I feel like the I will not is actually more powerful because you can get really clear on what I will not tolerate anymore. And this can be anything, whether it's drinking or um, some boundary in a relationship or something at work or you, how you spend your money. Like I will not tolerate, you know, me spending money at the coffee shop every day or out to eat, whatever it is and having a clear declaration. And then the third is that surrendered action I was talking about. Like we have to come to a place where we realize that the mind that we're living in is the same mind that got us here. So doing it alone and trying to quote unquote, figure it out almost never works. I don't know any humans that's been able to really do that on their own. So I think it's a matter of, you know, what kind of support do you need? Do you need a new perspective? Uh, Is it from a coach? Is it from joining a community with other people's dealing with the same things? Like some new action steps towards a new, towards your new calls. So that's how that's mapped out. And then inside of that, really deciding, you know, like, what are my needs anyway? And are they being met? Because if our like fundamental needs are not being met, that's a huge issue. It's going to be hard to make change in the other areas. Yeah, because you have to get past that survival mode or you'll never be looking at the future. You're just right in today. I think that you gave us so much to go on and I feel like, um, all these people are going to want to follow you and go check out your podcast. Where can they find you? Yes. Thank you. I love it. This is like my favorite thing to talk about. So it is set free sisterhood and you can find it on Apple, Spotify, all the places. And, um, I do have a Facebook group as well. It's called the same thing, set free sisterhood Facebook group. So I would love that. And, um, if anybody just needs extra support, that's where they can find me. And even, even Instagram, probably I love voice messages like DMS. Cause it's just, I'm a great, you know, I know you're the same angel. <laughs> so just it's at coach Michelle Porterfield over on Instagram, just shoot me a message and say hi that you heard this and you know, any questions you have, I'm, I'm an open book. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and your story, and we will meet you over there. Until next time, wishing you joy and abundance, Angel.